Thanks for uh, coming to the bioinformatics session. This is awesome. My name is Brad. Uh, I help with the organization. So anyone who's talking later and is worried, uh, just come up and we can test it, um, make sure everything's working. And I'm not going to do intros or anything. What we're going to try to do is do sort of groups of rapid fire talks. Uh, so there's, I think there's four talks in the first session and then we'll have 15 minutes of discussion. So the idea is like talk, 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 and then have a discussion amongst all the panelists um, about the, all the ideas. Um, my goal here is trying to combine uh, different approaches that people are taking and sort of try and learn uh, from the general community what people are interested in. So uh, that's the idea. And so we're just gonna go wham, wham, wham through everything. Everyone introduce themselves and uh, we'll discuss afterwards. So go for it, Aaron. Thanks, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Aaron Quinlan from the University of Virginia. Uh, I lead a computational genomics lab there. Uh, in part, we use Python to to read and analyze uh, human genomes in the context of disease. And the other part of my lab, we develop open source tools for working with high throughput genomic data. Uh, so what I'm gonna talk to you today about is a, a project that we've been working on for the last year or so called Gemini. It's a, it's a framework based on uh, Python for exploring genetic variation among thousands of de genomes um, in the context of population genetics or disease traits. So before I go into what the tool is, I just want to acknowledge Uma Pila, a postdoc in my lab, who's been leading this effort and, and a really great collaboration with Brad Chapman, Roy Kirshner, and Oliver Hoffman at Harvard. Um, it's been uh, a great collaboration. So, so in genomics, we're, we're, um, we're at a really great point in time. Prior to 2008, uh, it cost like a bajillion dollars and a thousand people to sequence one genome. Uh, roughly around 2008, a little before, uh, there was an explosion of new, really high throughput DNA sequencing technologies uh, that make it a whole lot cheaper. Uh, you know, we're on the order of $4,000 per genome roughly now. And so there's a, a bit of a uh, perception in, in the field that, well, if it's so cheap to sequence genomes, it should be, we should be mapping disease traits and really understanding the uh, genetic risk of those traits much more readily. Well, it, it's, it's a little more complicated than that. I mean, what, what really, the problem is a, it's a classic signal to noise issue. When you sequence lots and lots of genomes, you find lots and lots of genetic variation. And the challenge is to, to separate the small, small minority of genetic variants that confer risk for a given trait from all the just sort of benign passenger uh, uh, genetic variation that exists in, in human genomes. So. From a really, really high level, um, studies of genetic variation uh, basically follow the same basic pipeline, whether you're doing case control analysis, which is basically sequence a, a bunch of people with a disease trait, cases, and a bunch of people without controls, and essentially do a fancy diff on their genomes to figure out statistically what are the risk variants that, uh, that distinguish the two groups family-based studies, cancer genomics, where you're sequencing tumor genomes and, and, and match normal tissue from the same patient. Uh, different study designs, but effectively it's the same process. We sequence lots of genomes. We go through a standard process. There was a talk earlier about uh, bow tie. That's a tool that's used to align DNA to the human reference genome. Um, and once you've aligned the data, you do some standard uh, noise and error elimination steps that's common to pretty much any area of science. And then we, we run some tools to find genetic variants. And at the end of the day, what we end up with is this, this uh, kind of hokey file called a, a VCF file, which stands for Variant Calling Format File. Essentially, it's a big matrix um, where the rows are the positions in the human genome where genetic variation has been observed in, in the sample group that you've sequenced. And the columns are the genotypes for every one of the samples. So for a typical study with 1,000 patients, um, you'll have 1,000 columns in this matrix and probably on the order of 30 to 40 million rows where those rows, again, are genetic variants in, in, the, uh, in, the, in those samples. So at that point, you've got a big matrix and your challenge is to interpret that genetic variation and try and isolate the variants that uh, confer risk. Um, you pose hypotheses, you, and you test them, and you try and try and try again. And one of the main challenges in, in doing this is something that my lab faced really early on and was really pissed off about uh, from the get-go, was 
you consider a single genetic variant in the genome. So here's a position, a hypothetical position in the genome. The top is the, the top sequence is the reference genome. Underneath it are chromosomes from other individuals that were sequenced. We can see that C and T alleles segregate in the population. The question is, okay, if we have some hint that this might confer risk, maybe it's enriched in cases versus in controls, we want to know what in the world it's doing, why it confers risk, to put it in context. And in order to do that, we basically have to bring in a ton of other what I call annotations or markups of the genome. And, and there's, there's just, you may be familiar, familiar with some of these databases. The ENCODE project gives us information about regulatory regions in the genome. We've got data on protein domains and repeats and variants that are known to cause Mendelian disorders. Ultimately, all these studies have to bring in this information in some way or another, maybe not all of it, but subsets of it. We wanted to automate that process because these data sets are highly heterogeneous, they're large, they're stored on random websites. It's, there's been some effort to centralize it. So motivated by that challenge, we developed this, this framework called Gemini. Um, it's, it's based in Python, um, and, and the basic idea is that we wanted simple commands. So we have a command called Gemini load, which takes a big VCF file, again, rows and columns, columns are genotypes, rows are genetic variants, and maybe a PED file which describes relationships among the samples in the study. Um, and when you, when you run this load command, it automatically, using this, this stack up, listed up above, it automatically populates a SQLite database with all these genetic variants, puts it in a very easy to query interface um, by automatically marking up all these genetic variants with the um, annotations that I showed on the previous slide, as well as any others we want to add on, on demand. That's a fairly computationally intensive process. Uh, one of the innovations that Brad and Rory have contributed to the project is using IPython parallel to actually distribute this over LSF, SunGrid, um, or uh, Torque uh, compute nodes, or we can run it on a local box with multiple CPUs. So it speeds things up dramatically because it's it really is an embarrassingly parallel uh, process. Um, users can also add their own annotations when we load, so that really helps because inevitably there's going to be some annotation that's relevant to just your research. Um, I think one of the more important parts of Gemini um, is that you know you have, let's say, for a study of a thousand individuals, you're going to have 30 million variants, and for every one of those variants, you're going to have a thousand genotypes. So if you made a sort of a naive genotypes database table, you're going to have 30 million times a thousand. Uh, rows, which you know, that's a really big number, and most database systems like SQLite will start to not enjoy that at that scale. So what we did instead was we took, we take all the genotypes for a given variant and put it into a NumPy array. We pickle that thing, we compress it, we convert it to binary, and we put, store it as a, a, a SQLite blob column so that um, we have the cardinality of our database is limited to just the number of variants. So if there's 30 million variants, there's 30 million rows in the table, and we can actually, we can, SQLite can deal with that. Um, so we, we have methods to automatically decompress and expand those binary objects back into NumPy arrays so you can do good, interesting good stuff with it. So the idea is that once you have all this data loaded into this framework, it's really an API for um, ad hoc data exploration. So here's an example of a, a query asking for all the genetic variants that are novel, rare, less than 1% allele frequency, or loss of function, and overlap with some disease region um, that you're interested in. And by the way, you can just automatically um, ask for variants that meet an uh, autosomal recessive inheritance model. And so building on that framework, we can also release command line tools to just you know, run a, a series of, of common analysis tasks so we can look for autosomal dominant variants, de novo, de novo variants, autosomal recessive, et cetera. And what we're most excited about is, is the thought of this framework being really an API for new tool method or visualization development. Once you have all these annotations, all the variants, all the genotypes in one centralized place, the database is in effect the API. And to demonstrate that, here, we have a really simple API at this point called uh, Gemini Query. 
So you can import this module, connect to a Gemini database, issue a query, iterate through the variants that meet the conditions of your query. So this is kind of much like the existing SQLite database interface in Python. But some of the trickery that we pull is you can automatically pull out those, uh, pull out and uncompress those genotype uh, or, uh, genotypes into NumPy arrays so that now you essentially have a vector of genotypes and you can run association tests and you can develop your own new methods just based on this simple interface. And so what I, ju I just want to show quickly is that um, because we can limit the cardinality of the database to roughly just the number of variants, not the number of variants times the number of samples, um, it's, it scales fairly well. I mean, so what I'm showing here are some basic queries that we, what you would often run. Um, and on the columns, we're comparing a, a study with three samples versus a thousand samples. And obviously, it's slower with a thousand samples. There's just a lot more data. But it's not, it's not 333 times slower. Um, here's an example of a recent study we did last week where in five minutes, literally, uh, we got a VCF file from a vendor for nine tumor normal pairs. We loaded it into Gemini and had a list of all the candidate somatic mutations in those nine tumors, identified recurrent genes in maybe five and a half minutes. Um, so the, the goal of it is that, so, this, so in summary, our goal is to really provide a flexible open source framework and system for people to uh, conduct studies of genetic variation on a population scale. Uh, it's free, it's open source, it's uh, probably should say fairly well documented. Um, we believe it to be extensible, uh, portable, and it really encourages reproducible research and uh, should be out in PLOS computational biology sometime soon. Um, so thank you. I'll take any questions. Oh, that's right. That's right. Sorry about that, Brad. <laughs>